Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're doing part two to my best serums for specific skin types series. So I did a how to build a basic skincare routine video, and then I followed up with a video all about the best ingredients, products, toners, serums to look for, for dull, dry skin. So this is the second part to that video, all about oily skin concerns like acne, blackheads, and hyperpigmentation. So let's just dive right in and we'll start with acne. Now there are a number of different ways you can attack acne. And I just wanna be clear though, that if your acne is really severe, it's definitely worth going to a doctor to check out because oftentimes the skin is the first place that we see evidence of something a little bit bigger going on. So it could be due to, I don't know, hormonal imbalance or gut issues that you see acne. And unless you eliminate the source of the acne, you know, treating the acne topically isn't going to be very effective. But there are some topical products that can help with the treatment of acne, also prevention of acne, if your acne is not something a little more systemic in the body. So niacinamide is one of my favorite ingredients of all time. It's probably my favorite antioxidant because it does so many different things for the skin. It is you know, really well suited for oily skin types because what it does is it actually helps to control sebum production. So if you have oily skin, your sebum tends to be a lot thicker, higher in oleic acid. You tend to produce a lot of sebum and it builds up and it oxidizes inside your pores, causes blackheads, causes congestion, causes acne. But niacinamide actually you know, takes things a step back and actually scales down sebum production in the skin. There are a ton of different companies that make really, really amazing niacinamide serums. I've tried niacinamide serums from Good Molecules, The Ordinary, Vestiva, uh, Paula's Choice. So there are a ton of different products that can suit your particular skin issues and price points. Um, but in my opinion, the best serum for my skin type, which is dry to normal, is a Vistiva Urea 5% and Niacinamide 5% Rosewater Serum. It's got a really hydrating texture to it, which makes it really great on my skin personally. But if you want something that has a little bit of a drier texture, you're not really into that like deep hydration feeling. The Niacinamide Serum that I recently tried and did really like, but it wasn't perfect for my skin, was the Good Molecules Niacinamide Serum. That one is really wonderful. The next ingredient that I think is really great for controlling acne is beta hydroxy acids or salicylic acid. Salicylic acid at a low concentration is wonderful for treating blackheads, for treating pores, for treating acne because it has a very low risk of irritation as compared to other ingredients that I'll get into later, but it's also really, really effective because it's oil soluble. Because it's oil soluble, it can actually penetrate the pores, travel inside, and actually break down the oxidized sebum that you have inside your pores that can cause a lot of congestion and blackheads and breakouts. So in clearing out your pores, you're actually going one step ahead of acne and preventing acne from occurring. But in addition, salicylic acid is a great treatment for acne that exists on your face as is. You'll see a lot of dermatologists recommend salicylic acid face washes and salicylic acid overnight treatments, and they're all really, really great. My favorite BHA will probably always be the Paula's Choice BHA. I just think it is such a beautiful blend of ingredients. It's really well suited for a lot of different skin types because she has a liquid exfoliant, gel exfoliant, and lotion exfoliant. So if you have a little bit of like very aggressively oily skin, the liquid exfoliant is going to be perfect for you. Whereas my skin tends to straddle the line between dry and normal. So the gel exfoliant works really well, but if you have dry skin, you can try the lotion exfoliant and it'll work really nicely for that skin type. I do have another BHA product coming in the mail soon. I did order the Glow Recipe Watermelon Toner PHA BHA Toner, um, and I'm really excited to actually try it. It looks like it's going to be really, really nice, but I can't say anything until I actually try it on my skin. I'll definitely keep you guys posted because my expectations are very, very high for that product. For really, really stubborn acne, if you just have like a couple of spots here and there, like for example, I get hormonal breakouts on my chin and it'll just manifest as one or two spots on my chin. You can use spot treatments. However, the one thing with spot treatments is that they can be quite aggressive. And by aggressive, I mean very, very drying. So generally in spot treatments, you'll see something like um, benzoyl peroxide or a higher percentage of salicylic acid. These ingredients can be very aggressive and very drying on the skin, which is why I recommend using them as spot treatments. I don't recommend applying them all over your face because that's a recipe for a damaged skin barrier and excessive dryness on the skin. They're generally very, very powerful and will dry out and reduce inflammation of the acne mark very, very quickly. The spot treatment that I use is the 
Clean and Clear or Clearasil Rapid Action Vanishing Spot Treatment. Um, I will link it down below because I don't actually have it with me right now, so I don't I don't have it to show you. But that one is very very powerful. It has a very high constant, not very high, but it has a higher percentage of benzoyl peroxide in it, and it really does aggressively dry out and bring down the inflammation, bring down the size of whatever breakout I'm having. So in my opinion, because they're so drying, I do think they should only be used as like a last resort. But if you do have like one or two stubborn spots on your face that just will not go away no matter how much, you know, niacinamide you're using or salicylic acid face wash or salicylic acid overnight treatment like a BHA, uh, chemical exfoliant, um, I do think a spot treatment is the next best thing to do. Another really fantastic ingredient for acne is retinoids. And it's actually a very common myth that younger people like teenagers or people in their 20s or even 30s shouldn't be using retinoids when in reality, um, retinoids are actually developed to help with acne. And you do see a lot more acne in teenagers and people that are younger because when you go through these hormonal changes in your body, your sebum tends to kick up production pretty high and that causes your skin to basically freak out and get super clogged and breakouts do occur. Retinoids can be super 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 effective but it's really trial and error trying to pick the best retinoid for your skin. I will say that I did start my retinoid journey and I have been trying some retinol products on my skin and it's it's been a little bit interesting, but I do have a video coming up in the future all about my experience with using retinoids. Um, but since I'm still currently testing products, I can't recommend anything to you. If you have any really great retinoid recommendations, then, then definitely leave them in the comments down below so that I can read them and anyone else who's looking for really great retinoid products can also read them too. On the topic of blackheads, I did touch on the fact that BHA or salicylic acid at a low concentration can really help with that. I do want to impress upon you that pore strips are not it, not the move. Pore strips are super, super damaging for the skin because they're very sticky. They really aggressively tear at the skin and they also don't provide long lasting effects. What you're essentially doing with a pore strip is removing a very superficial layer of that blackhead inside your pore when in reality, what you wanna do is clear out the pore really nicely. So although pore strips may immediately make your skin look really good, they're really not a long-term solution and you really shouldn't be using them because they're super harsh and super damaging. So I definitely recommend and opting for a chemical exfoliant like salicylic acid and using it several times a week over the course of you know several months in order to see results. The last topic I wanted to tackle is hyperpigmentation, namely post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So these are namely the dark marks that are left on your skin after you have inflammation or a breakout. So it's going to be dark in color and actually pretty stubborn to remove. Hyperpigmentation will fade with time as your skin cells you know resurface and renew, but in order to speed things up, there are some ingredients that you can look out for. And there are so many different ingredients that are really wonderful for treating hyperpigmentation. Some of my favorites include niacinamide, vitamin C, and arbutin. These are three really high performance, really great ingredients that can really help with hyperpigmentation. So I already touched on the niacinamide serum from Visiva. That one is really great because it's really hydrating. In terms of vitamin C serums, I'm still testing out two. Um, I will have finalized thoughts on them a little bit later, but can't recommend anything now. But I do know for certain that the Paula's Choice Vitamin C Booster is one of the best on the market. It's so powerful and yet it's just formulated in such a sophisticated way. It doesn't irritate my skin. It just makes my skin super bright and super happy and super healthy. These ingredients all have different mechanisms on how they target hyperpigmentation on a molecular level. And so I will link my video that I did about the biochemistry behind skin lightening agents. So if you wanna see that video, it will be linked down below. And with all these products, I just want to make sure you understand that it's a marathon, not a sprint. You can't expect to see overnight results from any of these products. Skin it takes time to renew. It takes about a month for skin to renew itself. And so you can't possibly expect your skin to drastically change overnight when using any of these products. You can probably expect to see noticeable results within two to three months of consistent, diligent use of these products. So hopefully that was helpful in rounding up, you know, the best ingredients to look for and the best products to look for. Now, I will say that I didn't have a ton of product recommendations for you because, you know, acne and excessive oiliness and blackheads are really not 
not my area of expertise because I don't really struggle with them. I told you about the chemistry behind how these ingredients work, but from my personal experience, I just I haven't really struggled with them, so I don't really have you know specific products that I can recommend to you. But I gave you ingredients to look out for, and you can do your own research. So we're gonna do a very quick product evaluation. Um, I picked a comment from a video, you know, a couple videos back, and we're going to be evaluating the Versed Baby Cheeks Hydrating Milk. So if you want to have me evaluate the ingredients of any skincare product, all you have to do is comment it down below in the comments, and in a future video, I will pick a comment and evaluate the ingredients of it. I do wanna put out the disclaimer though, that although I am evaluating the ingredients of this product, I can't really give you a review of it because I personally have not tried it. I have said it over and over again, and I'll continue to say it, but ingredients only tell half the story. Formulation is also super, super important. So although something may have you know, really nice ingredients, if it's formulated in a very poor way, it may not be very pleasant to use on the skin. It may not have a great effect on the skin. It really just depends. So disclaimer done. Now we're going to get into the ingredients of this product. So this is described as a three-in-one cleansing milk, makeup remover, and hydrating toner. I will agree that based on the ingredients, it looks really, really lovely as a hydrating toner, like hydrating stuff in your routine. Um, you know, based on the ingredients, so I don't see any surfactants, so I don't think it's going to be great for makeup removal or cleansing. I think in order to get a really effective cleanse or a really effective, yeah, cleanse or makeup removal method, you need to have some sort of surfactant in there, and you'll find that even with oil cleansers, you do have surfactants in there. So I don't think this is going to be really effective as a cleansing step, but I think as a toner step, as a moisturizing step, um, that's actually quite watery and quite thin, and therefore easy to layer stuff on top of. I think this is a really, really nice product. I do see a lot of emollients and a lot of hydrating ingredients, which is really, really nice. I think it's a very inoffensive product. I don't think it's really like amazing or anything, but if you watched my unpopular skincare opinions video, you know that I did touch on the fact that we've become so obsessed with the idea of high performance actives that with products like this, even myself, I'm kind of conditioned to say, well, it's, it's okay. It's not great because it doesn't contain super like high performance exfoliating actives or anything like that. But it is a really nice step in your routine to have something very hydrating and very moisturizing. This is probably not a good standalone product just based on the reviews that I've read and also looking at the ingredients. I do think you have to support this particular product with an actual cleanser with surfactants in it and also with something a little bit more substantial in terms of hydration and moisture if you have dry skin. If you have oily skin, it's possible that this could be adequate on its own, but I just don't know. Would I personally buy this? I probably would. I do actually really enjoy having like a watery, moisturizing, hydrating stuff in my routine. I think that's something that my routine has been missing for a little bit because I have gotten into the habit of really scaling down my skincare routine and really, really bringing it back to the basics. And so I'm slowly starting to add more steps to my routine. And I do think this would be a really, really nice kind of hydrating stuff in my routine to supplement my other serums and supplement my other moisturizers. So that's that on that. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending this time with me. I hope you have a beautiful week and I will see you in my next video. Bye!